Welcome everyone to the seventh round of the Qatar Masters 2023. We have Karthikeyan Murli from India taking on Magnus Carlsen. Karthikeyan is born in 1999 and he is currently rated 2611. His highest ELO was 2637. We have the dignitaries who are going to play the first move. One E4 says Magnus and Magnus actually these days is telling the guests the move that he's going to play. That's very interesting because some players tell the guests to make a move, then take it back and then start. So here you can see Magnus has played e4 and now gets all his pieces in order before pressing the clock. Very interesting. Karthikeyan, by the way, is very well known for his ability to solve problems, compositions. He's very good. Which just goes to show that his imagination and speed of calculation is amazing. For now, we have e4, e5, knight f3 on the board. And Karthikeyan goes for knight to c6. We'll see what Magnus does here. Will he go for the Italian or the Rui Lopez? He goes for the Rui Lopez here with bishop to b5. And now Karthikeyan has to decide which line does he want to go to. Berlin? No, he goes for a6, asking the question to the bishop. Well, the bishop has to move, bishop a4. And we will see what is the line that is played. Knight comes out to f6. Both the players currently are on 4.5 points out of 6. So this is a very crucial game with 3 rounds to go. The one who wins here would have an excellent chance of finishing on top of the table. Knight to c3. Now this is not a very common move. And you can see that Karthikeyan actually takes a bit of time before playing b5. Uh, because the main line of course here is castles. And you play your pawn to c3 later and play d4. With knight coming to c3, this plan is no longer possible. But Magnus wants to play something which is slightly offbeat and could throw his opponent off his preparation. But Karthikeyan uh, is making his moves pretty quickly. Bishop c5 and maybe we can have a transposition to the Archangel's variation. But not really. Magnus wants to go in fresh territory. He goes knight d5. Now if you take the pawn here, I have a very strong move d4. And that's the reason why taking this pawn is not a good idea. Karthikeyan plays the move d6. He's down to 1 hour 18 minutes. Magnus has 1 hour 28 minutes. And he plays c3. And the same idea persists. He wants to go d4 here. Already it feels like white has a nice pleasant position out of the opening. And now bishop comes to e6. So this is not really a very wise way to play. Because now I can just castle, which is a good move. And also play d4, which Magnus does, and strikes in the center. And notice now, you have to be very careful. Like, if you take, take, and go, which, which Karthikeyan has done, and Magnus is going to recapture here. Uh, C takes d4. And now if you move your bishop back to a7, you are simply losing the game after takes, takes, and pawn up to d5 with a fork. So clearly you can't do that. And so Karthikeyan takes the knight in the center. Now, here d takes c5 is met with taking on b3 and then the e4 pawn is also weak. So Magnus takes here and two pieces are attacked. But Karthikeyan comes out of it with a check. And if you play bishop d2, uh, that's not what you want. King f1 is an excellent move. Just imagine if you play bishop d2, I take, take, knight e7. Black is doing very well. But with king on f1, now you have this bishop alive and you can actually go bishop g5 and pin it here. That's the main thing. Okay, maybe knight e4 is an important move here. But black has, white has many moves like h4 is possible. Magnus plays this slightly dubious move, queen d3. Uh, I do not like this move so much. And Karthikeyan plays queen d7. The main point is that the d5 pawn is weak. But if you take it, 
it's going to open up the position for the white bishop. So Magnus actually does not even invest any time or effort in defending it. He tells Karthikeyan, be my guest, take the pawn. And Karthikeyan is saying that that pawn is mine to be taken at some point, at the right point. For now, I'm just going to play my pawn up to h6. h5 played by Magnus and he's actually daring Karthikeyan to go short castles because then later on g4, g5 can be very strong. So Magnus objectively is not making the best moves but psychologically is putting a lot of pressure. Now Karthikeyan takes the pawn on d5. This kind of opens up the bishop's diagonal. But for the time being, these two knights are very solid and supporting each other. They can't be moved uh, and it's a nice formation. Whoa, rook h4 by Magnus. And I think he's preparing for the fact that if black shot castles, he wants to go g4, g5. And that's the reason why he's brought his rook here. Very interesting chess. And Karthikian long castles. Whoa. Did that come as a surprise to Magnus and Karthikian is down to 17 minutes on the clock. So now the position is very dangerous because white can actually break on the queen side with a4. But first Magnus plays a3, asks the question to the bishop that you need to move. The bishop moves back and now you can strike in the queen side with a4. And that is exactly what Magnus does. So if you play b4, the a6 pawn is hanging. So you can't push. The a file is going to open up. Is this trouble time for black? Not really, says Karthikeyan. He says that my bishop here, my knights here, are actually limiting your pieces and your rook on h4 is doing nothing much. Even if you take on b5, I'll take back and place my king on b7. Magnus was unhappy with his knight on f3. It was doing nothing much here. So brings it to d2. Also wants to exchange it on e4 so that this stronghold of black pieces is broken. Rook comes to e8. Rook h e8 on the board. And now Magnus takes on b5. Let's see what Karthikeyan plays here. Uh, I think he must take with the pawn. If he takes here then bishop c4 is just game over. So ab5 played. If you give a check here, then king b7 is a very good square for the king. So no problems there. Uh, you know, black's king's weakness is kind of offset by his centrally positioned pieces. They are so beautifully coordinating. Now knight e4 is a good move because in a way, what Magnus is saying is that your pieces are a bit weak. So I'm trying to exchange it. Queen, King b7 played. Perhaps not the best move, but humanly very logical. And Magnus now finds a very interesting move. Queen f3. The threat is knight takes knight and then attacking this, pinning it to the king. So Karthikian plays his queen to c6. Very cool. And now a good way to continue is to take, take and take the pawn. No, but Magnus goes bishop at six and this is a blunder. What he's hoping for is that after take, 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 he would be better. But what he has missed completely is that rook takes e4 is possible and Karthikian finds it. Brilliant move. Rook takes e4 and you can see Hikaru there in the background looking at the board. Rook takes e4 is just a massive blunder because after rook takes e4, which is forced, now you can take the bishop on h6, which is exactly what Karthikeyan has done and his position is winning because now he has two pieces for the rook and these two knights are very solidly placed. A massive error by Magnus, rook e1, he just simply missed that black could make that intermediate Rook takes e4, happen. He goes rook e1 and now Karthikeyan, what is his move? Here he goes king b8, fantastic move. Because the threat was rook c1 and then picking up this knight. So king b8 is such a cool move because now the queen can settle down on b7 when it's attacked. Rook e2 played by Magnus. When you make moves like rook e1 and rook e2, you know that it's no longer that great a position.
Magnus is hoping that bishop takes pawn happens when he can get his rook to the center but Kartikeyan is doing none of that. He goes queen to b7. It's a choice between now, yeah, he takes on d5, knight takes d5. Kartikeyan, down to a minute on the clock, has been making so many good moves. Queen takes f7 has been played. And now, this could become a weakness on h6 and these pawns could become very strong. But the, the move here that black should play c6 and Kartikeyan plays it. Because if queen g6, there's knight f4, and that is a big problem. And if you bring your queen uh, back, then black can just coordinate queen g7, rook f8. So he takes the queen, king takes, and you can see that displeasure on Magnus's face. We are on move 29. Kartikeyan has 1 minute 47 seconds. Magnus has 6 minutes. But time has become less relevant here. For the simple reason that black's position is now way easier to play. He brings his king to the center of the board. And now Magnus can go in and attack this pawn on h6 with rook e6. He does so. But Kartikeyan should not get passive. Rook h8 means a passive move. Rook f8, what a beautiful move. If you take your knight e3 check and you win the rook. And then if you move your king away or the rook away, then rook comes to f6 and I trade the rooks. Rook d2 played and now that's how Kartikeyan will fight for an advantage with rook to f6. So you see that he's not made his rook passive at all. If you trade the rooks, then with minor pieces, black king comes in, the pawn is weak and so Magnus keeps the rook. He plays his rook to e4. How should black make progress is the question here. Yes, he's better, but still beating Magnus from a better position is never easy. King d7 played. One idea could be rook e2, trying to then enter the position. He goes g3 and this is not at all a good move because now Kartikeyan can actually go rook to f5 and attack this pawn on h5. He plays it and... Uh, you can see Magnus shaking his head. He has to go g4, but with this move, he weakens the f4 square where the knight can jump in. So now the rook can move back. Exactly, rook goes back. He saved everything. Magnus Carlsen is in big, big trouble here. And even the time pressure that Kartikeyan has is not really helping him at all. Rook comes here and again setting up a small trap. If you go here, rook f3 and white wins. So clearly you don't move your knight to that square. You move your knight behind. Fantastic. You are now going knight e6 attacking here. Putting your knight on this amazing squares. So rook e3 played by Magnus. Maybe he wants to trade here. Get into this and try to attack. And Kartikeyan goes knight e6. And his point is that now this pawn is hanging. But with this move, rook e3, Magnus had prepared a special move here. Uh, this is move number 38. We have still not re reached move 40. So he plays d5. And his point is if you take the rook, I take the knight with a check. King takes and rook takes when the position is drawn. So Kartikeyan has to keep that patience here. He takes the pawn. Rook f3, important move. You can't take here because your rook is hanging. So that's why first he plays rook f3. And now, you instead of trading, you can go rook g7. Again, so accurate. So accurate. Now the g4 pawn is hanging. And also the knight is ready to jump into d4. So plays rook d5, attacking the pawn on b5. And uh, rook takes the pawn. So slowly and steadily, black is coordinating. And I love how confidently Kartikeyan is converting this. We've reached move 40. Magnus goes and has a small bite, something to eat after a, such a long fight. And now rook f6, he comes in to attack the pawn on h6. Bishop d4, fantastic move. And one of the ideas of this move is, of course, to attack the b2 pawn. But if you take here, which Magnus would most likely do, 
then you have this excellent move which i'm sure kartikeyan has seen it he's very good at such things trapping the pieces rook f4 it's not just attacking here but king c6 is going to trap the rook notice how the rook does not have any squares left so he takes the pawn and lets uh kartikeyan take the pawn on f2 this position should be drawish in nature if it were not for the fact that magnus's king is actually getting checkmated here king e1 and you can see that he, a rook and a pawn for two pieces is what the material balance is this is completely fine but knight c5 and now the problem is there is a check coming in this pawn is hanging and with the bishop moving in it's these three pieces are actually launching a mating attack on the white king king d1 and now bishop bishop e3 seems like a fantastic move yeah exactly the rook is hanging and if the rook moves let's say rook h7 i go king c6 and then if you save the rook let's say rook b8 i go knight b3 with a forced mate here there's no way to stop this mate so that's the reason why bishop e3 played and i think it's completely losing now kartikeyan also has 24 minutes he's walking around magnus calls him and says i'm resigning the game and that is a victory for kartikeyan the biggest one of his career previously he has beaten mvl and firuja in an immortal queen sacrifice and there you can see magnus saying i just missed rook e4 i i just did not see rook takes e4 and kartikeyan of course uh analyzing with him what i would really like for you guys to do is check the analysis what they are saying it's not so easy to understand everything but look at how magnus is analyzing even after losing the game he still very very much keen to understand what's happening and towards the end he also congratulates kartikeyan this is something that is an example in sportsmanship and a brilliant game played by kartikeyan a big congratulations to him <laughs>